coding and all these things in the last session. Okay, some of the things whatever we have done, we will discuss today. So, last class I have already done, this is very very important. This you have to come back again and again to understand the passing parameters in function. So, what is procedural programming? Procedural programming means it is not that in line 1 to line 10 you write a program, it's finished. It is not a program. Whenever you have a successful program, is line 1 to line 2, you call it at least one function more than one time. So, if line 1 and line 2, you make a block of 3 lines, another function, you call that function one, at least not once, at least more than two times. That means you are saving time. So, some repetitive portion which can be repetitively called, you can make a Procedure that is called another name of function is procedure and that is it is called procedure oriented program. Procedure oriented program. So that is the state of C. But C doesn't have a class definition. C plus plus have C plus plus. We have only a, the structure. We do not have associated functions method with it. Then it will be class definition. C doesn't have. C plus plus does have. Our Java have does have. Python does have. That is object oriented. That is another powerful type, but that is not necessarily powerful at different times. So, procedural programming is still the base of the programming because most of the, not most, 99%, 100% of Java executables, virtual machines, and the, our uh, Python, all are made in C. C and C. So, C is very important. So, first we can take the function, then you pass the values. Pass the values, how to pass the values to the function. One thing is call by value. You just give a copy of the parameter and whatever is done in the inside the function that will not be reflected. But that is not the job because you want that particular value should be returned back, then you have to return those by return them. Return those values. That is then you have to your function call, we generally call the function call, say body of the function. Call int. So this is the return int function. And whenever you see like int a, int b, int a, int b, that means you are giving. And this is the how do you know this is the this is not the body because the semicolon is there. That means it is the signature of the function. Signature of the function is very vital. It has to be at the beginning of the file. That should be signature. Okay. These are the function to use. This is the signature of the function. And whenever you don't think, do, do not see any star in front of it, that is the point at which. Your rest has shown that there is a valid, you know, giving a copy, and in the, in the body there is a return. So sir, that is it, yes. Sir, what is the use of function signature? Function signature, very good question. Function signature is needed for the compiler that this function, I am declaring it here, the body may be found this file. Or maybe in another file. I am giving the signature. This is the signature I am giving it. That you you must match it. The body of the function may be within this file or maybe others dot C file. So signature of the function should be used at the all top of the files. Which functions are so if you yes. if you get a value by call by reference, what is the mean of call by reference? Call by reference, I have to call by reference is much quicker because call by reference, whenever you see the star, that means whenever see Right now the video is taken. It is taken with the 1 GB at least. You cannot pass it to call by value. So there is another 1 GB value will be required. In whatever platform that is not used. So generally image, audio file, video file, we always pass by call by reference. So that is a call by reference. But C does it very fruit method. It, it refers the actual address of the memory to that calling function. That is how that is not good. So there has to be a clever trick. The C pointed is the actual address, and machine to machine it differs. But call by reference is always faster, but call by reference is always risky. The program can be error prone, call by value is much safer, but it might be slower. Good question. Any more question on call by value and call by reference? Any question? Any question? Sir, so just yeah. Sir, so call by reference it will return the address of the variable or the variable itself. What is the question? Sir, for call by reference. Call by reference address is passed. Address of that particular type, it is passed. Whenever you see, whenever always there is start, this, this operation should be That is, whenever the body in the formal parameter it finds start, that means it is a basically variable pointer type. 
and that is another thing that I have declared that is a pointer underscore. Why I have discussed? Because whenever you make a variable pointer underscore, I think it is an integer pointer. So it is a good practice whenever you are creating a pointer, you always use like if you have a floating point number, so you always write float float pointer, so star pointer pointer f. Okay. So that means whenever you see it, that means it is a pointer type, it is a floating pointer. Okay, so any data type, whenever you add a star in front of it, then if you, if you have a say 20 data types, then a 40 data. So pointer is good enhanced. You, you can uh, address uh, star to the structure also. The any structure, and you can it can be also uh, passed as a point. Okay, any question? On uh, call by random, call by reference. But you please go on to this and why call by value is always safer, call by reference is faster. Okay. Now this is today's topic is first topic is somebody asks what is the question static? Somebody have asked the question. Do I mentioned it earlier? Linkage. What is? Linkage. Linkage. Linkage means why you use static. Last class I have told you why you use static. Whenever you declare a static variable name outside a in a file, outside main and other function, that means it's a global, global with respect to that file. So if you if you don't put static here, this ID is global. But you cannot access from file to ID. Then you have to write external external int. External name. You just have to write external name. Nothing else. Then this I A variable is global to this file and this file. You don't have to write this. But if you write this also, then this will be not seen. Then this variable will be seen. So that will more clear confusion. Agree? So any variable name if you, or any function name, if you put static in front of it, that means that variable is almost global, but within that file and that variable will be created at the just in memory map in the global variable section of your memory. It is not created in stack. That all variables are generally created in stack, and another type of memory allocation that is malloc and calloc that you create it from here that I have already given okay. any question about this what is static linkage this is the linkage static means it is a global within this file if you want static here that is a two different value sir why are yeah. we using this static like if we yeah, don't because, use static it yeah because sometimes we always feel something global say we are working we are working, four programs are working, and in front of the, in the first floor there is some variable, say 1, 2, 3, 4. We are checking whether some examiner is coming in or not. That is a global variable. Everybody looking at it and checking. So, certain times in programming, we may not need, we try to avoid no global value. That is the goal. Yeah. And in fact, Java, Python, you will see there is no concept of global value. There is a concept, but we will not use it. Global value of this, everybody can look at it. Everybody can change it. That is the risky thing. If everybody can change it, then the program will go here. Yes, so then the global variable should be seen by another function with password. Like we have to see it and we have to change it. Okay. So global variable we sometimes think and if you have global variable within we have to lessen the scope of the global variable. If you have to put the global variable within a file, you put it static. It is better. That variable at least global with that file. Because any big program, it consists of more than 3, 4, 6 files. So if you want, you cannot manage uh, without any global variable. So you put all these functions together and one global variable to static in front. Okay, any question on static? Sir, yeah. in case of static, we can use uh, hashtag define in the and define in the variable in the header file. Then yeah, that you can do. That you can do, but better to be explicit. It is better you put it static there and other place. If you do not use it, you don't have to do anything. Okay. So if they access and if you want to use that, that is static the color. Then we have to do without static and then you have to write it static. Okay. So that is more undesirable. So global variable anyway is to be known. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any question on static, static function, static variable, static, and even within a function, the static variable is declared, that means the copy last value of the value 
that value will be retained. The next call, the, that, call that will contain the value. So static is very powerful feature. So that's it. Now another brief over to over C data type that you almost all everybody knows. The C is a primitive data file and most of this is changing. Is it mutable? Mutable means changing. Whenever you go to Java and Python, in that Python, 90% of the variables are immutable. You cannot change it. So even the basic variables are not changing. In Python, if you go for integer or floating point number, they are not changing. Why? Because when the Python is developed in 1991, there are lots of memories are there. Say 4 GB, 8 GB, the memory is reusable. But memory you can claim memory. But whenever the C is developed in 61, 62, the C, memory is very precious. Like 8 K, 4 K. So memory has to be reused. So that is the concept of C. It doesn't have a string. String in Java, you can have a string that is reusable. You cannot change. And it has been found programmatically that if you generally any name, See, my name is shown up right away. It will not be changed after I am born, it will be all lifetime it will change. So, whenever your name and almost everything in the program, string generally doesn't change. If it's changed, another population is better, it's faster. So, that but C, you, it is all taking the array of characters. So, it will be copy. It takes much, it, it takes larger space. If it's immutable, so this, if it's immutable, it's a smaller place. C, it is a larger space. So, C string operation is always better in Python and Java. But overall C is much faster. So, that way you cannot tell. But string handling is much better in C and Python. But remember, C data types, basics are primitive data types. You all know the problem is integer data type or float because it depends on compiler. The compiler integer has 2 byte version, 4 byte version. Now, more or less a 4 byte. And there are various types of integer, short in, long in, double, all these things. A user defined the data type which is having a pointer that we why I make a red sign because pointer data type do not get it in other language. And another is structure and union. Today I talk with further with structure and union. Union is mostly not seen in other languages. So it is almost uh, only only uh, only comes to C. So it is not there in Java Python. Structure is very much there. Structure is very simple because you have a first name, second name, your roll number, your upper ID number, you put it in structure. And uh, union is you keep only, you can keep only one data which is a high size. So Say what is this email? Yeah, I'm done. Say I am the union, see, I am declared union. So it is the character name 32. Float salary is a 4 bytes. The integer worker number is a 4 bytes. But ultimately it will take the 32 bytes. So it will take the maximum value. And structure it will take all of this. It is a 40 bytes. So union is almost Use only the highest value. And if you put a one value, other value will be not there. So union is used as that. But why union is created? Uh, because at that time again the C has a memory only maybe 64k. So that's the time union is used of this. But in one space you can put only one of them, not all. And in structure, you can put name, your salary, your worker number, and all together. You can you can operate it with dot operator. You can also dot operator, but it doesn't. One value is there, other is not. Okay, question. Sir, so what was enum? Enum, enum, enum. Enum, enum, you should know. Enum is like, is it enumerated? It is enumerated. Say, weekdays. I enumerated weekdays, Mondays, one. Automatically, Tuesday will be two, Wednesday will be four, like this. Enum is always a is enumerated type data type. It will take an integer value with. with Increment class one. Chai. That is very helpful uh, for your mm, programming. So, enumerator is uh, a particular data type, integer data type, starting with 0 and 1 as you wish. So, that will be very helpful in your program readability very helpful. There are weekdays. If you go to the airport, at any, you see 1 to 7, Monday is 1, Sunday is 7. So, that is the enumerated data. So, integer data type with some fixed range, lower range and upper range, and incremented by one. But the element can be two also, but that is a more complex. Any question from here? Sir, what is type yeah. date? Type date. Type date. Type date, we should know. You can declare a definition here with a type date. So, it's like here, start job, it is a type date new, this is a type definition. So, you define a new structure because that is the power of C. You have a multiple data types, even you can have a structure.
structure within a structure, you can declare with a definition type table. Then you don't have to put that in, you just put that. It is a just a you are you are creating an upper structure. Remember, in C you cannot create any upper structure, but say you already know tuple. Tuple probably no tuple, tuple means it's fixed size. Yeah, tuple has many meanings, they are the same, we all the same. Like set ABC, set BAC, set CBA is same. Because set doesn't have any order. A, B, C. But C doesn't have the data type. But the Python doesn't. Python has a data type called set, frozen set that you cannot add to it. Python has a data type with list. List is equivalent to array, but in C array, all data types should be of same type. But in Python list, it can have a 14 point integer character, anything. A list is kind of a bucket. Okay? The multipurpose bag like this, here it can have anything. The list is a array of different data types. So it is formed. And array is there in num array, numpy. That is another data type that is conventional array this or this. And remember this Python has the list is there. Tuple will say that is changing. Tuple means it can be changing. Tuple means you cannot add to it. List is you can add something. Tuple means you cannot add. It is fixed. That is a faster operation. It is the immutable. And uh, even list is immutable. List is immutable. List can be changing. But tuple is immutable. It is faster. But you can see everything is changing. Okay. So any question about the data type? So what is external? External I have already told. The external means you have different variables here. And definition you want it in here. So, definition can be found in other files. So, do we yeah. include the yeah. previous file into the uh, second file to be No, no, actually, in one file, your definition should be there. So, if you put static here, if you put static here, this two different A values. If you put int here, global, then you must put extra here to be A to B. So, the 5 and 5 to are two different files? Yeah, two different files. So, so, we have to include one file and another to access the. Generally, that is compressed, so that should not be used. It should be di different. Okay, any, any header definition should be header file. Yeah. You can put another header file, you can put the real each page. That file will include in both files, that is okay. But that you have to practice. Any more questions? So, what we have summarized today? First, we talk with the function. The function is main thing. In Java, we call it a method. But here it is a function. Method is associated with some structure, then you call it class. In C, we can have with a structure. The structure is the parts of the body. But if you have some class, uh, methods to it, then it is a class. That is a template. So that then you call a method. But anyway, in methods, you have to pass the values. Pass the values. Otherwise, what do you do? So, so that is the call by values and call by reference. We try to follow call by values, but sometimes you cannot include call by reference. You have to be very handle. Certain times, some people have some implementation form is coming. You check is the star operator. Whenever you are using the pointer, you have to initial is better than the pointer with now. So what I have to say, say if you want to declare like pointer in this integer pointer, say here pointer pointer i equal to now. Now what you think it is initiated when the pointer is declared, it is pointed to ground it. Later on you can initialize with anything. Then you can say pointer pointer i content of point and this is the file. That is allowed. That is allowed. But better it is with now. So this is it. This is it. So any any confusion to segmentation for you must if any segmentation form comes, quickly you just, where you are suspecting it, you, before that you print all the variables. Then you come to know what is, what is happening. This is the way the debugging. Another is debugger. That I will show you by minus G option. In, then you have to debug option. Then you can also step by step you can debug. Any question there? So please carry on the, these things. And another thing I have not mentioned that is malloc and caloc. I just Quickly say you can get a chunk of memory from heap by malloc operation and caloc. But when you use one, malloc is you have to give the total size of the bytes. So 
So that that will not be initialed. It is faster. And here you have to say data types of and number of that data type. So, so if you have four integers, in malloc you have to say four into four. In most of the cases, integer are four bytes. Malloc sixteen. And in calloc you have to say four size of integer. So that okay. So that uh, that is the, the calloc is always initialized in zero and Calloc can give, uh, that is it, Malloc, and you have to, whenever you get the memory, so Java and Python, they always reclaim that memory whenever that is not used, that is garbage allocation. But C doesn't have, you have to deallocate. So, memory you have taken it, automatically if you want to return it back, the whole system will crash down. So, in a function, you are always taking some memory, but you are not free. Then you have to free the memory by free, you know, free. That pointer. Malloc and calloc always gives a pointer back. And that pointer is always void pointer. What is void pointer? Now you have many types of pointer. What is null pointer? One is void pointer. Another pointer is coming damping pointer. That is a typical question asked in any subsequent digit. That is typical. Null pointer means you are initiating the pointer to the ground end. Now, no value is there. So that is a keyword. And void pointer is a pointer. I am creating a basic pointer type so that any pointer I can reference. I can put an integer point to it, I can put a protein pointer into it, I can have any void pointer is the most general purpose pointer. You can put anything, otherwise, it's pointer mismatch. Okay, and another is damning pointer. A pointer is created because you have taken up the value, pointer is dereferencing with anywhere in the your memory. That is very risky thing. That is called damning pointer. So next day I'll talk with the pointer concept, but please read it. Yes. So what is the difference between null pointer and void pointer? Yeah, two different things. Null pointer I am initialized with null, and null means that is grounded value is to zero. Nothing. That pointer, that null pointer should be integer type, but void pointer should not be initialized with zero. And void pointer is redundant is void. So I can any pointer value, any integer pointer or floating point pointer, I can pass on to that pointer, void pointer. See, you see that your malloc and calloc operation return type is always void. So I have always said void pointer. Okay. So whenever you see that return type is void, that means it is. Please, any questions? Any questions? Thank you.